You're watching Morning at NTV. Welcome back and many thanks for staying with us right here on Morning at NTV with me, Romeo Busiku. Now, on September 17th October, actually this year, Dr. Dania Biamukamo, the head of the HIV prevention at the Uganda AIDS Commission, shocked the nation by claiming only 9% of men aged 40 to 49 years used the condom when they engaged in extramarital sex in 2018. Can you imagine that? He said a condom. He said condom use actually is continuously declining from 38% in 2000 to 24% in 2018. He added that while the general prevalence of men aged 40 to 49 is 14%, prevalence among men in this age bracket who engage in extramarital affairs is highest at 25%. Now to explain to us the facts behind these numbers and what it means for HIV and AIDS prevention, we have the main man, Mr. Daniel. Biamukama himself in studio from the Uganda AIDS Commission and he joins me right now in studio. Good morning, Mr. Biamukama. Morning. Thank you for coming. First off, Doctor, when you say condom use has dropped to 24%, what does that mean? I think uh, it means several things. Mm -hmm. Condom use has dropped for particular age groups. Mm -hmm. As a general trend, we see that condom use, of course I was comparing when I made this presentation, mm -hmm. uh, comparing statistics from as early as 2000. So you see a trend, the use of condoms in general has gone up, mm -hmm. but it has gone up mainly among young people. Mm -hmm. Teenagers who are scared of impregnating other people's daughters. Mm -hmm. But when you look at the adults, mm -hmm. those who should know better, mm -hmm. Women above 30, you would imagine most of those are married women. Mm -hmm. Men above 30, mm -hmm. you would imagine most of them are married. Condom use is down. Mm -hmm. You would imagine those age groups already have a source of income. Mm -hmm. They can afford to buy a condom. Mm -hmm. But for those particular age groups, mm -hmm. the condom use has gone down, mm -hmm. significantly gone down. Like you write the quote, it is shameful mm -hmm. to find a man above 40. Mm -hmm who engages in extramarital sex, he should know better. He has seen HIV. Mm -hmm. He has seen the pain and the inconvenience it can bring on a person. Mm -hmm. Only 9%, 9 out of 100 men above 40 who engage in extramarital sex, remember to use a condom. Mm -hmm. So it's a concern. Mm -hmm. And as you write the report, mm -hmm. they have the highest HIV prevalence mm -hmm. in the country. So it's no surprise. So we would want to get back mm -hmm. to have a dialogue with these adult men mm -hmm. to remind them of um, where we have been mm -hmm. and tell them we are not done yet. Mm -hmm. Let them continue using a condom. Mm -hmm. Let them not give up. Mr. Gamkawa, let's take a look at the genesis of this problem, if I'm not mistaken. Um, HIV resurfaced in Uganda, actually was discovered in Uganda, early 1980s, right there. Yes, that's right. And became a major problem in the early 1990s. Yes. So we were able to get some reprieve as we moved forward right there with the government you know ramping up you know campaigns yeah. to you know um, yeah. to urge the public to use condoms in yes. that regard and the biggest population that was targeted were the youth yeah. of that time yeah. and uh, the people in northern Uganda there were stories that the youth are not using condoms because they feel they are itchy yeah. and are not natural to be used yeah. right there yeah. but then some are there to the cause and there was uh, a drop 38% yeah. right there by the year 2000 because of those campaigns. Yeah. Now, could this be that the reason we are not seeing uh, these campaigns anymore that we could be seeing a surge in HIV prevalence in Uganda yeah. at 24%? Yeah, thank you. I think you said so many accurate things. Mm -hmm. Number one, there was a high prevalence of HIV mm -hmm. in the early 1990s mm -hmm. and the late 1980s. Mm -hmm. And we did not have treatment, we did not have therapies at that time. Mm -hmm. It was mainly a campaign focusing mm -hmm. on abstinence, mm -hmm. being faithful to your partner, mm -hmm. and condom use. Mm -hmm. And we managed with just mainly those three mm -hmm. to bring the HIV prevalence down from around 18% mm -hmm. to like 6%. Mm -hmm. So condoms have been a backbone mm -hmm. of our HIV response. Mm -hmm. We cannot give them up. So, but you're also right mm -hmm. that our campaigns to promote condoms have gone down. Mm -hmm. And I think as a country, as the Uganda AIDS Commission, it's our duty we're already planning for this. It's not that we don't have the resources yet mm -hmm. to go back to the communities for this condom promotion. Because as you rightly say, condom use is not natural. 
somebody needs an incentive to use it. Mm -hmm. So we need to get down to the people and do this promotion again, mm -hmm. encourage them to use these condoms. Mm -hmm. And I would imagine the age group 40 and above mm -hmm. were the youth yeah, at that, that time. And during that time. Maybe you would imagine they have gotten fatigued of using a condom, but would want to urge them not to give up mm -hmm. because the battle is not finished, mm -hmm. it's not over yet. You cannot do your best mm -hmm. and then give up when you're 40. Mm -hmm. So we'd encourage them to continue mm -hmm. until really the battle is done mm -hmm. and um, we are prepared to move on with the campaign. Mm -hmm. What is missing is actually the resources mm -hmm. to do that marketing again, mm -hmm. that promotion again, which we think our people need. Yes. Of course, in addition to making the condoms available. Mm -hmm. yeah. So our people actually, who actually knew better back in the day 20 years ago, Absolutely. actually the ones that are disregarding information that is actually vital to Absolutely. them, like condom use right now, 24% of them, 40 to 49. So you're saying 100 sexually, out of those, every 100 sexually active Ugandans, 24 uh, only use condoms. No. What I'm saying is that out of 100 men, mm -hmm. adult men, men who have the money to buy a condom. Only 24? No. Only 9% mm -hmm. who, of those who engage in extramarital mm -hmm. affairs mm -hmm. beyond your faithful partner. You do casual shakes or you go with somebody's uh, wife or something. And Mr. Biamukao, these people so know only better. Only 9%. They know better. They've been educated. That is what is the con That's why They've it's a concern. They've been educated. Absolutely. They, they have a lot of information with regards to HIV, how it's transmitted. Absolutely. Let's talk about deliberate transmission. Uh, is it a crime in Uganda to deliberately trans uh, infect someone with HIV? Because I'm looking at California in the United States. Yes. It's, it's simple misdemeanor. Yeah. They won't actually charge you for infecting someone else with HIV. Yeah. It's kind of like a parking ticket or over speeding on the road. They'll just give yeah. you a ticket or something, yeah. a, mis yeah. a misdemeanor. Yeah. In Uganda, how does it play out? Yes, currently, according to the, the National HIV Control Act of Uganda of 2014, mm -hmm. it is a crime to deliberately transmit mm -hmm. HIV to another party. But you see, the good news is that most of the people in Uganda are HIV negative. Mm -hmm. So those who forget or deliberately decide not to use condoms, mm -hmm. they are not at the risk of transmitting. They are more at the risk of acquiring. Mm -hmm. So for the sake of their health, we would want to see people, mm -hmm. the people who know better. We are seeing another trend that certain behaviors which increase the risk mm -hmm. of contracting HIV have been on a progressive increase. Maybe you would want to blame, would want not to blame, but to attribute it to antiretroviral therapy. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the number of men who engage in casual sex, both men and women, mm -hmm. is actually increasing. Mm -hmm. When you compare from 2000 up to 2016 where we are, mm -hmm. we see that there has been a progressive increase of number of men who engage in casual sex. Mm -hmm. By our age, we were scared of engaging those things mm -hmm. because HIV was visible. Mm -hmm. People were moving around, collapsing in minibuses. Mm -hmm. We are seeing the number of men and women who are willing to engage in extramarital affairs mm -hmm. on a progressive increase. We are seeing a number of men willing to pay for sex, mm -hmm. live around the increasing number of sex workers on the street. Mm -hmm. So there is a negative trend, which is negative in the context of HIV prevention. Mm -hmm. So with that negative trend, you would expect the behavior mm -hmm to minimize the risk of contracting HIV to be going up, mm -hmm. but it's going the negative. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing that our population is still risky. Mm -hmm. The number of people contracting HIV is still high. Mm -hmm. Last year alone, there are 53,000 people who contracted HIV. Indeed, yes. Those 53,000 are many. Actually, some districts in Uganda mm -hmm. have a population of 53,000. Mm -hmm. So you can imagine a whole district contracting HIV. Mm -hmm. So 53,000 is still high. So I would want to argue the population that it's not over yet. Mm -hmm. The danger is still there. As much despite as having we, the ARVs. Despite having the ARVs. So with the ARVs, we believe people think the danger is passed. Mm -hmm. Because they are no longer seeing that physical mas manifestation of the pain mm -hmm. AIDS can bring a person. Mm -hmm. So people have become a bit lax. Mm -hmm. So but would want to urge our people not to give up. Mm -hmm. A condom has been a backbone of our HIV response. Mm -hmm. We cannot wait for everybody to get HIV and we give them treatment. Mm -hmm. Because we do not have that treatment uh, Mr. for everybody. Yes, for everybody, you do not have that treatment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, Mr. Biamukama, uh, some experts have attributed the high cases of uh, HIV right here in Uganda to um, cross-generational sex. If we are right now saying um, aged men between the age of uh, uh, 40 to 49 are not using condoms, yes, and absolutely. these are the same men who are financially well-off to yeah. lure the yes, younger absolutely. girls into... Yeah. 
these um, sexual um, activities. Yeah. So the idea is cross-generational sex is yeah. the reason we are seeing this yeah. rampant rise in HIV. What yeah. do you make of those allegations? Thank you. That is an accurate observation still. Mm -hmm. You must have heard of the presidential fast track initiative mm -hmm. on ending AIDS in Uganda by 2030. So the president has come forward and said we have what it takes to end AIDS in this country. Mm -hmm. But he has prioritized certain areas of concern. Certain hills of Achilles, that's mm -hmm. what they call it in English. Young women. Young women are contracting HIV disproportionately. Mm -hmm. And these young women, as you rightly say, mm -hmm. They get it from the adult men. Yes, I have already showed you the adult men who have the money and the knowledge mm -hmm. are not willing to use condoms. Mm -hmm. They have the highest HIV preference. No wonder young women mm -hmm. have a disproportionate share of the HIV preference. Mm -hmm. So the problem of cross-generational sex mm -hmm. is one of the key drivers of the HIV problem in the country. And in the presidential fast track initiative, the president lays down a plan. Mm -hmm. to minimize that mm -hmm. vulnerability of young women to old men. If the old men want to, to get HIV, let them stay with their HIV. Mm -hmm. But he lays down a plan that we are rolling out on how to minimize the risk of a young woman mm -hmm. falling prey to this old man mm -hmm. who has the money, mm -hmm. who has the power, but who also has the HIV. Yeah, as because can, the, the, the young women right now, they will very probably tell you, I cannot date you, Romeo, because you do not have the money, but I would rather yes, date an older guy who, you know, mm, give me whatever I want. They have this saying that they would rather cry in a Mercedes Benz, yeah. you know, that be, than be happy yes, on the absolutely. bicycle. I'm the bicycle, the absolutely. older man is the has Mercedes the, Benz. The yeah. But then at any time, this Mercedes Benz can crash, and yes, the airbag absolutely. will not be able to protect this lady. So what are some of the solutions right there to avert this problem? Thank you. The young woman listening there mm -hmm. should know that the old man in the Mercedes Benz mm -hmm. has the highest probability of infecting you with HIV. As I've shown you, and as our journalist has pointed out, mm -hmm. the men above 40, they have the highest prevalence mm -hmm. of HIV in Uganda. It's above 14, it's around 14. So be wary down there. Mm -hmm. The president's plan has various uh, initiatives, including keep the girls, mm -hmm. keeping the girls in school. Mm -hmm. We have noted that when girls stay in school, they are actually less vulnerable, they are empowered in the long term, mm -hmm. not to make those kind of decisions, mm -hmm. but also empower with economic mm -hmm. opportunities. Mm -hmm. So if the girls get out of school, are uh, they left down there to be beggars. Mm -hmm. So the president's plan is to implement a series of income generating activities mm -hmm. and social economic empowerment, mm -hmm. targeting young women to make sure they get out of that sadistic uh, desperate tendency mm -hmm. of saying, I would rather die, but die in a Benz. Mm -hmm. No, it is not worth that. Mm -hmm. So there is a plan that has various packages, including keeping in school, uh, social economic empowerment, mm -hmm. even ending gender-based violence. Mm -hmm. So trying to empower women that they are assertive, they are so that they are less vulnerable to make that kind mm -hmm. of service decision. Mm -hmm. And we are currently rolling out this plan, and we hope by 2020 we should start seeing uh, the benefits, mm -hmm. the impact of the presidential fast track mm -hmm. initiative on addressing HIV in young women, mm -hmm. on addressing that cross-generational sex, mm -hmm. cross uh, cross sex, which you know is rampant now in the country, and is putting many of the young women at risk. At, at any very, time, very big risk. At any yeah. time, if you went to Makere right now, for every one young boy mm -hmm. you find with HIV, you will find four girls with HIV. Right, right. And that is because the girl is being targeted by the adult man. The adult man who has the power, who has the Mercedes Benz, but also who has the HIV. So we would want to end that trend. Mm -hmm. And as part of our national HIV response, we are trying to end that trend. Target the girls in Target schools. The young girls. Now, what about the girls that are out of school right yeah. there? Yeah. You, you, yeah. You've, if you've used social media before, you've seen these slay queens on Twitter, on Facebook. And their demeanor is always mm -hmm, the life of money. Absolutely. You know, trying to say, Absolutely. I would rather have this older man in da 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 da. We've, we've yeah. talked about this. So yeah. what are you doing to help these people outside of school? Yes, absolutely. How are you targeting There is them? something. We are doing something in school and out of school. What is interesting is that most of the young women 
or rather unfortunate most of the young women who are above 15 are actually out of school mm -hmm. it's an unfortunate part of it so we have programs targeting those who are still at school mm -hmm. we have programs aiming at keeping the girl in school longer mm -hmm. but we also have programs implemented under the ministry of gender targeting reaching young women out of school mm -hmm. to reduce their vulnerability to give them the knowledge they, know, mm -hmm. they need to prevent themselves uh, from HIV. Mm -hmm. We discover actually one of the factors that makes the young woman vulnerable, even the young man, mm -hmm. is that they're not, not knowledgeable. They mm -hmm. don't know how to prevent HIV. Mm -hmm. So we're looking at revamping our campaigns to make sure we spread the message again. And you must have heard the president's voices now on TV spreading the message as he did in the 90s mm -hmm. to make sure people know mm -hmm. what worked in the 90s, what can work for them now. Mm -hmm and how can they can minimize the risk of contracting mm -hmm. HIV. So HIV is still real. As long as, as much as people are not collapsing, mm -hmm. as much as people don't look sickly, but it's real and even when you contract it, it still has the same consequences mm -hmm. like it had in the past. But the most important, the country does not have the resource mm -hmm. to treat every Ugandan if we are all contract HIV. Mm -hmm. So we still call upon people to make sure do things as we have always done abstain if you are not yet married mm -hmm. be faithful to your partner if you have a partner mm -hmm. but don't forget to use a condom mm -hmm. then the others we shall tell you mm -hmm. if you contract hiv then we can but we would encourage people not to invest in contracting hiv mm -hmm. i'm coming right there telling you that uh, abstinence is key if you're already married, you need to be faithful to your partner right there. The government can only do too much in that regard okay. when it comes to prevention of HIV right there. Now, Mr. Biamukama, I'm looking at this young girl that is, you know, in, uh, adhered to your cause, and uh, this young girl is abstaining. But then an unscrupulous man comes around, uh, swoops her over, and rapes her. The family gets to know that this uh, guy A raped our daughter, takes the guy to police, the case is there for a week, but then police says, oh no, this issue should go on trial. Reaching trial, the judge says, no, you need to settle out of court. And when you settle out of court, the family mean, the means the, part, the family of the victim and the family of the tormentor will have to come to some sort of agreement. Now, this is what happens one too many times. The family of the victim and the tormentor will agree for the tormentor right there to marry off their victim. How has that trend exacerbated uh, the rise in HIV in Uganda? You're very right. I have already pointed out that for every one young boy you find, young man, there are four girls with HIV. Mm -hmm. So which means girls are disproportionately affected. Mm -hmm. And one of the explaining factors is actual sexual violence. Mm -hmm. Recently, the government conducted a violence against children report. When they published the findings, the findings were embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Many of the young women are actually being sexually assaulted. Mm -hmm. As the government has several measures in place, number one, as the head of HIV prevention, I would want the young women there and the caretakers of the young women to know that beyond taking the the criminal who has raped a girl to seeking justice, the immediate need is for prevention of acquisition of HIV mm -hmm. for this young girl. Mm -hmm. We have a method of HIV prevention called post exposure prophylaxis. Mm -hmm. A girl who has been sexually assaulted, if you brought her to hospital, we will give her a certain drug which she can take for a month which will significantly reduce the risk. Mm -hmm. I have been trying to get to people, and unfortunately, not so many people, not so many girls are using this pain. I want to call upon the girls outside there. If you've been assaulted, go to a health facility that treats HIV, get post-exposure mm -hmm. prophylaxis. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the most immediate, mm -hmm. the immediate thing. Mm -hmm. The way how we shall address uh, corruption within the justice system, mm -hmm. within the police, I think that is beyond my concern mm -hmm. as a head HIV prevention, mm -hmm. but I would want the girl out there, the mm -hmm. teacher out there, the parent out mm -hmm. there, to know that there is hope for a girl who has been sexually assaulted, mm -hmm. bring this girl within 72 hours mm -hmm. to the hospital, mm -hmm. we shall give her treatment that will re reduce the risk mm -hmm. of contracting HIV, and we know many young girls mm -hmm. are falling because of sexual violence. Mm -hmm. Addressing sexual violence, there are so many measures the government has put in place. 
and I think that can be addressed at another. Mm -hmm. Mr. Biyamu, you've mm -hmm. given me an excellent answer, but then it didn't actually answer my question right there. Yeah. My question was actually centered on deterrence, deterring this um, criminal from doing the same again. If the family is entering some sort of deal with the tormentor, how sure are they that this person will not rape another girl when they go back to the streets? So the idea is, yes. if this person goes back to the streets and yeah. does the same yeah. thing, yeah. How, is, how are such deals that are negotiated out of court yeah. increasing the risk of uh, HIV amongst our population? And it's an issue to do with policy. Of course. Mm -hmm. There are policies and laws on books that should deter Men Should we lock them up forever? Because how sure are we they will do, How sure are we they won't now there, there you're asking me for my personal opinion. Yes, I would agree with you mm -hmm. that actually I've had because we are seeking deterrence, right? See, now. I have reached a time when they presented the violence against children report. Mm -hmm. It showed that many young women are actually sexually violated, mm -hmm. and in that meeting, I really tended to remember what Dr. Matembe you say mm -hmm. that these men should be castrated. Mm -hmm. At that time. I did not understand her like any other man. I was a young man outside there. But I think she was right to some extent. Mm -hmm. The men who actually assault a 14, a 12 year old girl, Indeed. an old man, 45 years, Indeed. and you are raping a 10 year old girl. Mm -hmm. I think that's one I agree with Dr. Matembe mm -hmm. to some extent. Mm -hmm. But of course, that is a personal opinion. But right. at the professional level, I like those enforcing the law mm -hmm. is beyond the, is outside the health sector. Mm -hmm. It is, I leave it for the legislators, mm -hmm. I leave it for the policymakers. So if, if the legislators and the policymakers are not doing their part, it will actually make your job actually quite Absolutely hard. Right. If you're treating 10 patients on a Monday, you'll have actually 50 Absolutely. in two weeks. Absolutely. So what should government ideally do to help you right there at the Uganda Commission yeah. to avoid this problem? would want to see the government, number one, implement the laws that are already in the book. Mm -hmm. Ensure there is transparency, mm -hmm. ensure these girls get justice. We know that there's so much frustration. Mm -hmm. When I talk about post-exposure prophylaxis for young women, they tell me when we get the police, the police wants money. Mm -hmm. You can imagine asking for 20,000 for somebody who has been exposed to the risk of contracting HIV. Mm -hmm. And because he doesn't have, she doesn't have 20,000, she goes back home. Mm -hmm. And then later she contracts HIV. So, but would want to say, there are already enough laws on the books to deter Mm -hmm. This uh, opportunistic man who fists on little women, mm -hmm. but these laws are not being implemented. Mm -hmm. We would want to see the government really implementing the laws that are on books. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be enough mm -hmm. for the start. Mm -hmm. I cannot ask for more. So we veered off to the ladies right there because when it comes to HIV, you cannot forget yes, to talk about the ladies absolutely. right there yes, and how they are being affected by this. But then let's not lose the plot. The plot is men who are not using condoms yes. right there. Yes, absolutely. For, uh, 24% between the age of 40 to 49. As we wrap up, yeah. where are we failing and who's responsible for this? I think we are both failing. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to exonerate us, the service providers, but I also would not want to exonerate the individuals. Mm -hmm. You see, HIV prevention is an individual responsibility eventually. Mm -hmm. So an adult man above 40 knows better, has the resources to buy a condom. Mm -hmm. would expect him really to, to procure a condom, mm -hmm. to prepare for her sexual activity. Mm -hmm. I would expect an adult man to be knowledgeable that HIV is still there and it is transmitted mm -hmm. through sex. Mm -hmm. So at an individual level, I want the individuals to own your responsibility mm -hmm. and get back to using mm -hmm. condoms now because HIV is still real, as I have told you, 53,000 mm -hmm. last year contracted HIV. Mm -hmm. But at a service provider level, we must admit that uh, we have failed here, mm -hmm. especially in getting condoms to the people, to those who need them. I was looking at our reports, at our data, we noticed we have free condoms in the country. Mm -hmm. But I discovered when we analyzed the data, it's actually the rich men, the little few who use condoms. Mm -hmm. It is mainly the rich people like you who use these condoms. Mm -hmm. The people who cannot afford condoms mm -hmm. are actually not seeing these condoms. Mm -hmm. So currently we're coming up with a plan of refining and targeting better this condom distribution such that the free condoms mm -hmm. are not finished by the rich people indeed they get down to the poor man in the village and he uses and Mr. Biyaka, we've, mm -hmm. we've seen this scenario one too many times not only with the condoms yes. there's also this uh, scheme at yeah. Macquarie University that is uh, supposed to be giving tuition to our students that can yes. the scholarship yeah. scheme right yeah. there yeah. Uh, 
uh, the academicians came out saying that this scheme is being taken up by rich people by who actually states. do have the money yeah. to pay for their tuition. Yeah. So yeah. I would agree with you when you say that rich people actually are taking out <laughs> the, are taking the, away the free condoms yeah. that are supposed to be used yeah. by uh, the poor people right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, if we are telling the 40 people between 40 to 49 mm -hmm. uh, to, you know, adhere to use condom use, yeah. and these are the married people, yeah. won't this affect population growth in the country? No. Mm -hmm. This is condom use. You see, the challenge is one, that we are seeing these married people mm -hmm. increasing. There is a tendency, the mm -hmm. engaging in risky behavior has been increasing. Mm -hmm. So we're asking them, if you are going to go away from mm -hmm. home mm -hmm. to engage in extramarital sex. In someone you do not know, whose status you don't, you don't know. know. Casual sex, yes. somebody you found in Kampara when you had come for mm -hmm. business. Mm -hmm. Please use a condom so because is, you yeah. know better and you can afford a condom. <laughs> so it won't have a problem on population on, growth because population when growth. it comes to your wife, you're okay to not yeah. use. But when you're actually engaging in other activities right there, ensure that you protect that young lady yes, from absolutely. whatever it is absolutely. you might infect her with yes, right absolutely. there. So mm -hmm. as we wrap up, what does it look like for the young people in terms of statistics? Are we okay? The young person? Yeah. The young person is vulnerable because as I've told you, mm -hmm. The adult man who has power, has the resources, has the highest HIV prevalence. Mm -hmm. The adult male likes the young woman, mm -hmm. is transmitting this HIV mm -hmm. to the young woman. And I've shown you mm -hmm. the presidential fast track initiative has come up to rally the, this vulnerability of young women. Mm -hmm. But eventually the young woman eventually transmits HIV mm -hmm. to their age mates. Mm -hmm. So this uh, looks like a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. We may actually not finish AIDS. So the young as people much. right now are not as affected as the older people because they are daring to condom use. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, young people are using condoms. Mm -hmm. We're happy. But as they grow older, mm -hmm. then they drop them, mm -hmm. which results in a progressive increase in HIV prevalence. So we want to call people, as you grow older, mm -hmm. perfect your skill of using condom. Mm -hmm. As you grow older, you have money to procure a condom. And we are seeing the Please opposite make actually sure. right we now are when it comes the to, to the adults. So and it has translated into a resurgence of HIV. So do we Absolute have enough trend. professionals to fill the gap? Professionals to... Do we have enough professionals to fill the, uh, the gap when it comes to combating HIV in light of the resurgence? No, 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 no. no. We don't have doctors to treat every gun. Mm -hmm. We cannot have. We don't even have chairs to sit every gun at the hospital. So we are calling upon people, don't give up the condom. Mm -hmm. As you grow older, as you become richer, mm -hmm. As you become wiser, mm -hmm. stick to condom. HIV is still real. 53,000 people contracted HIV mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. Those are so many. Stay using a condom until maybe the battle is won. We have set the deadline, mm -hmm. 31st December 2030. Mm -hmm. You can give up a condom on 2031. But now where we are, yeah. we're still calling upon you. Don't get tired. Mm -hmm. Don't give up. Mm -hmm. Don't get misled that HIV is gone. Mm -hmm. It is there mm -hmm. and it still has the bad consequences on the country and on mm -hmm. individuals. Do not give up mm -hmm. on condom use maybe after 2030 right there, vision 2030 right there. Yeah. Because HIV is still a problem in Uganda and cross-generational sex has not made things any more easy. Uh, the older people between 40 to 49, if you to engage in ex any extramarital uh, exercises yeah. when it comes to sex, please ensure that you put on a condom and you protect our young women. Because that young woman, when, you, when you're done with her, she's going to come to me. Yeah. And to I'll you, have, you, to your son. Yes, mm. and to me or my brother or you know, other person, and I'll, and I'll have to deal yeah. with your problem yeah. that you've passed on to another, uh, to another individual. And there's also Mr. Abiyamukam is also calling on the government to come up with some kind of policy, yeah. you know, to rein in on this individual because HIV in California is a misdemeanor, but in Uganda, where do we stand? So that's the $64,000 question right there. And Mr. Abiyamukam and Daniel, we've been, you know, talking about condom use, which has dropped to 24%. Our next conversation will be right after this short break. We'll be right back.